Real Country, 1430 AM and 107.3 FM, WRDN. I'm Brian Winnikins. Joining us this morning, Blaine Knutson, Executive Director of Pearson Pepin County FSA. Going to talk about uh, some programs for livestock producers due to the weather. Thank you to our uh, newsmaker sponsors, including Wisconsin Soybean Marketing Board, Wisconsin Corn Growers Association, Wisconsin Farmers Union, Synergy Co-op, Osteoplastics, Compure Financial, Animal Wellness Center of Buffalo Valley, Annabas Silo, and Elsevier Co-op. Blaine, thanks for joining us this morning. Well, with the heat and the drought, there are some programs available for livestock producers that may have lost livestock. Tell us about it. Yep. Uh, the main one that comes to mind would be the Livestock Indemnity Program. And this program is really designed to provide assistance producers that have suffered losses due to extreme weather events. You know, most, you know, come to mind right now would be the heat that we had to deal with this last week. Um, and this is for producers that had to either lost them, you know, death, or they had to sell them at a reduced price at the sales barn. And so what are some of the things that um, producers are going to need to be able to provide FSA to be, take part in this program? Yep. So when we're dealing with heat losses, we're mostly looking at, um, you know, a combination of the temperature outside and the humidity. So First, we have to have an eligible loss, so producers need to be kind of watching that. You know, with the with how it was last week, you know, it, it's pretty across the board that, um, you know, depending on which weather station you hit, those temperatures most likely hit. So we start off by working with the producer to make sure that we can find like an airport or something around them that, and then we get the weather data. Um, from there, they also need to know the number of livestock that died and their weight and their breed, which I'm sure they all know. Um, and they just need to have those numbers when they call in and we take that all down and and then it's kind of off to the races from there. Is there Are there some type of inventory records that we have to have? Yep, so to get started with, we'll wanna get a beginning inventory record. Um, what we've seen used in the past, um, you know, different operations keep track of records different ways, but I've seen, you know, uh, preg check logbooks, stuff like that, um, vaccination records, uh, insurance documents, kind of whatever we can use to get to that first beginning inventory. Uh, and then same thing for um, recording the death, um, you know, having pictures of all the animals lined out. I know it's not fun to take those pictures, but, you know, making sure that we can see all the animals clearly so they're not just in a pile um, and it's like, well, we're just counting legs there. No, we want to see them all laid out pretty clear and go one, two, three, you know, however many it is. And then uh, the other thing, uh, thing we've seen producers use would be um, like rendering truck receipts. If you have one available in your area, that's a that's a really quick and easy way to get um, the weight and the breed of the animals because they usually write that down for you, too. Talking with Blaine Knutson, he's executive director of the uh, Pearson Pepin County FSA program and talking about the livestock indemnity program uh, this morning. Blaine, is, is there a time limit here? Because I, I know right now in our extended forecast, we could see hot temperatures again here uh, the last half of the Labor Day weekend. So is, is there a time limit here on, on getting this stuff filed? Yes, there is. Um, so you want to contact us within 30 days of when the loss becomes apparent and uh, it, it's very key on those 30 days because even though we could have another, you know, uh, some high temperatures this next weekend, um, we want to tie everything that happened with this last one to those ones because um, we look at the temperatures within like a 48 to 72 hour window. So, and it needs to be tied with that specific event. Um, your total application will be looking at all of your losses combined but it's very key to contact us within those first 30 days. Talking with Blaine Knutson, he's the executive director of the uh, Farm Service Agency for Pearson Pepin Counties this morning. Blaine, before we let you go, non-livestock indemnity program question, but what are some of the things coming up that producers may need to keep in mind as we get ready for the fall harvest? Because we've had some issues as well with, you know, crop situations because of the drought. Yep. Um, you know, in Pierce Pepin, we we didn't trigger for the emergency haying and grazing um, for CRP. I know a lot of producers have asked that. Um, you know, there's the windows running out on that one. Um, the other program that a lot of producers have asked about is the livestock forage program. 
Um, and we have yet to trigger for that as well. Um, that's, you know, eight consecutive weeks in the D2. So, you know, to the south of us and to the north of us, we've triggered, but not quite in our area. So I, I know there's um, a lot of questions being generated on that. So, yeah. All right. All right. Well, again, if uh, folks have questions, just uh, give Blaine a call uh, at the Pierce and uh, Pepin County FSA office. Blaine, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. That is uh, Blaine Knutson, Executive Director of the Farm Service Agency for Pearson Pepin Counties. You're listening to the WRDN Morning Farm Report.